Hello everyone, welcome to Immortal Universe. In this video, we'll see about generations of X-ray tube. That is how X-rays were modified to produce efficient X-rays for good quality radiograph. Now let's get started. In 1895, X-rays were accidentally discovered in the Crookes tube by Sir William Conrad Ranjan. From here, first generation of X-ray tube was started. After many years of studying about these X-rays, Finally, these X-rays used in 1900s for diagnostic purposes in the medical field. By using this Crookes tube, the X-ray intensity is very less. So, what they done is they modified this Crookes tube and the tube called gas discharge X-ray tube. Even though after modifying this Crookes tube, X-ray intensity is also not that much. So, in 1913, Dr. Willem David Coolidge invented a new X-ray tube with a new principle and he named his name to the tube that is called Coolidge X-ray tube. This Coolidge tube works at different principle. It is not cold principle. It is works under hot principle that is by thermionic emission. By giving thermal energy through current supply to the metal, we can remove the electrons from the metal. This Coolidge tube made a great revolution because in this tube we can control the electron emission but in Crookes tube and gas discharge x-ray tube electrons cannot be controlled. If we can control electron emission we can control the x-ray emission also uh, and also it don't need any air inside the tube. This tube fully works under high vacuum. Even though this new principle is useful for good quality x-ray production, scientists faced a problem called heat. Due to interaction of these high velocity electrons with the target of the anode, there will be production of enormous amount of heat. This heat may damage the target so that tube life is going to be reduced. So if the heat is not quickly dissipated from the target, target may get soon pitting. Pitting means hole or crack is created on the target. If pitting happens, x-ray intensity is going to be reduced. So to dissipate this heat properly, they supplied water behind this anode. And here the water cooling system is also very complex to do. So after 1913s, they used copper blocks instead of water cooling system. Hence, copper is a good conductor of heat, right? So, copper is fixed inside this anode side and this target is embedded inside this copper block. So, when electrons interact with the target, this copper blocks absorb the heat quickly from the target and increases the tube life and reduces the pitting. And this X-ray tube is named as stationary anode X-ray tube. And this stationary anode X-ray tubes were used in general radiograph machines, portable X-ray machines, dental X-ray machines, mobile X-ray machines, and fluoroscopy machines. Even though this stationary anode produces good efficient X-rays, but still there is a problem in heat dissipation principle. And pitting of anode is soon happens inside the target. So to reduce this, in 1950s they invented the new x-ray tube called rotating anode x-ray tube. In rotating anode x-ray tube, the target is not stationary and also target is not very small. Your target is large. It is large disc tungsten target and they made this target disc to rotate by using rotor. In previous generation, x-ray tube's target is stationary. So all the electrons will interact at the same region for each and every exposure. And also only small region is used to produce x-rays. So by rotating the target, we can use all the region of this x-ray tube and we can also reduce the pitting so that tube life is increased tremendously and because of this large disc it can be dissipated soon and also oil is also filled around the x-ray tube so that oil also absorbs the heat so that this dissipation of the heat is rectified and the pitting of anode is also rectified and the tube life is also increased at last this rotating anode x-ray tube became a standard x-ray tube in the radiological field still now we are using this uh, x-ray tube and this rotating anode x-ray tube is used in general radiograph emissions fluoroscopy emissions computed tomography emissions mobile x-ray emissions and mammography emissions but one thing in mammography emissions, the target disc is not tungsten. The target disc is made up of molybdenum because molybdenum produce low energy x-rays, but tungsten produce high energy x-rays. 
hits the breast tissues or soft tissue right so if you use a high penetrating x-rays we cannot get details in, on the image the image is going to be overexposed so we need low energy x-rays so that molybdenum is suitable for producing low energy x-rays and that's it these are the generations of this x-ray tube and i think this video is useful for you and if you have any doubts or feedbacks on this video feel free to put comments in my comment box i'll try to make it on my upcoming lectures and if you want to get my upcoming videos you can subscribe my channel and thank you